So here we have Jesus saying, I do not judge, I don't pass judgment. Really, because I, I hear a different story from a lot of Christians to come in. The reading this morning is from John chapter 8 and verses 12 to 20. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards, I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself, and my other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or your Father, Jesus replied, or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one sees him. Because his hour has not yet come. May the Lord bless our reading and understanding of these words. And it's interesting and quite beautiful, actually, that Christ highlights that the reason our judgment is poor is because we judge from human standards, social <laughs> viewpoint. <laughs> And we get a lot of critique today, I think, rightfully, about a lot of how we look at things. From our young people, from uh, often the, those relegated to the sides of society. And it's, you know, we, we hear people harping on how they can't believe woke culture and all this stuff. And yet here we have Christ saying sort of the same thing, you judge from human standards, from a personal viewpoint, from your lens and history and tradition and where you're at. And I don't judge at all. And if I do judge, it's rightful judgment because the Father is with me, the divine parent, known by many names throughout many traditions. In fact, we hear God's voice shining over here right now. And we've reflected a few times about how Christ talks about us as the light of the world. And here we have him saying it about himself. So we've come full circle here, where he's defining himself in the same way he looks at those who follow God around him. He says in other places, you are the light of the world. And here he says, I am the light of the world. And it's interesting because when we think about light, we think about seeing, we think about observing, about knowing. And I can't help but relate this to our own consciousness. We know, we see, we observe, things come into light within us. But even further, light, as we know from the sun, our science, carries a heat with it, a natural heat. And Swedenborg put it this way, if light didn't come with its own heat, it would be like winter all the time. There's, there would be no life on the earth if light didn't come with heat from the sun. And in fact, as we know from our science, 
but you can't separate light itself in terms of the radiance and the heat. It can get cool, but there's a level of energeticness to light that we relate to heat. That's what it is, energy. So why is God calling himself, or why is Christ, the sage, the son of God, whatever you want to call or think of Jesus as, why is Jesus calling himself the light of the world and calling each of us that as well, calling us to them? As he says, become children of God. You must become like one of these to enter the queendom, the kingdom of heaven. Well, kids don't overthink things the way we do. You know, they just shine. They just shine. And it's interesting when we think about our own light, I think we feel it the most when we feel the freest, when we're not caught in our judgmental thinking and identifying with limited form, worrying about how our limitedness, whatever that is, our bodies, our church, our car, is going to do, is going to do. In fact, Christ says in other places, or God does, Jehovah, let's say, known by many names, Elohim, in the Old Testament, he says, I'm tired of all your religious stuff. Your incense smells disgusting to me. Your new moon festivals are despicable. All these things that you do, I find worthless. Why? Why? Because we became adults in them. We became these over-analyzing, judgmental creatures, and as we see in Christ's life, sometimes willing to kill for it, to defend it. Caught in our worry, our anxiety, not realizing the heart of God's message within, not just in Scripture, in our lives which is we are freedom itself. We are the wild, we are the spirit. We are one with these things, who's synonymous. Often we talk about God from a distance, and that's how we often been taught. And even when we hear about God being in us, or what have you, there's still this level of Okay, I gotta figure out God later. Or I'll take this seriously for a moment and then I'll move on. But in fact, God invites us to this awareness of our own lives for our sake, for our joy, for our peace, for the peace of others. God tells us we are the lies so that we can get out of ourselves and let go of the trappings of too much human perspective, too much human judgment, which I'll say is we can relate to not really humaneness or the divine humanity or the divine human, as Swedenborg would say, but person, limitedness. And when we're caught in that kind of thinking, limited thinking, pretty much any thinking that runs our life that we find ourselves rocked to and fro in, then we have some sort of malady when it comes to this. Sometimes we call it narcissism, and on the other side we call it too self-deprecating, too much self-judgment. Narcissists judge outwardly to defend themselves. They have a hint of you having any kind of critique of them. They, they attack often, right? We can feel some of that ourselves sometimes, right? And sometimes there's the other side of this coin, where instead of projecting our defensiveness outwardly, we project it inwardly, and in our over-identification with our thinking mind, we beat ourselves up all the time. I'm no good. Oh, I, I'm not worth anything. Both types of judgment, whether outward or inward, don't do ourselves good service. For a moment, it can invite us to maybe a healthier approach 
But often we are caught in this cycle, right? Caught in this cycle. Kids don't have that as much. And, you know, a lot of things can be said for kids. Swedenborg said that they are born with a level of um, selfishness that they have to overcome. In fact, we can overcome as adults to become innocently wise or wisely innocent. But in general, I think kids don't have this kind of baggage that we often have. Perhaps that's why Christ says we must become like them. And it's hard to imagine, really, that Jesus truly believed he didn't judge anyone. Even though he said, stop doing these terrible things, he wasn't judging them. He was inviting them to better health. We heard last week how Christ stopped the crowd from killing the woman for adultery. And he told her himself, I'm, I don't condemn you either. And he was inviting that crowd to realize that in their personal stories, in their histories, they're not perfect either. He said, ye who is without sin, throw the first stone. And yet the thing he's inviting us to, he said it himself, is blameless, is perfect. We hear it throughout the scripture, you will be made white as snow, or if we're from the north, black as the deepest ocean. <laughs> Sorry, I had to normalize that. Pure, whole. And funny enough, a lot of our sages invite us to this openness, the purity of what's here now. Not that we have to find outwardly the purity, the openness of our very light. It's no coincidence that we talk about understanding and wisdom and all these things in terms of light often. Eureka, right? Light bulb appears. Knowing, seeing, experiencing itself is a type of knowing. It's in our light. We shed light on the earth. We are the light of the world. And so today I ask each of us just to see this in ourselves. No matter what our minds think about the moment now, notice as awareness itself, what are those thoughts are arising in, in you? You can hold your thoughts in this room at the same time. You must be more than just that thinking mind, right? And so let's take a moment to allow the Lord's love, known as the universe, known as Allah, Krishna, the name, many others. Allow ourselves to see that higher self. Allow yourself to notice your own spaciousness. Your own seed of love. Allow the judgments to pass as they come. Allow the moment to be fresh. As it always is. <laughs> 